Surprise! Can you believe it? First of all, before I get carried away, thank you so much for being here. This is a comprehensive update on everything Dendrobium of Film. We are going to start with my monster mount, which I created on the 4th of August in 2021. Dendrobium of Films are such generous orchids when it comes to keikis, and I've never been able to get comfortable with the thought of throwing excess keikis away. So in the four years that I've had the mother plant, which we will have a look at towards the end, a sort of grand finale, I have been collecting Dendrobium of Film keikis and trying to get them to grow so that I can get more of this gorgeous orchid. These are my oldest keikis right here. And these keikis were not cultivated on the mother plant the way I cultivated the keikis that you see on my monster mount. These keikis were just left on the mother plant when the roots were long enough, I took them off and I mounted them. Despite looking amazing, considering they are three years old, they look nothing like the keikis <laughs> back there. That is because those keikis were babied from jump. The moment I saw keiki nubbins starting at the end of the canes of the mother plant, I went to town and I kept misting them, lots of seaweed. Eventually, when roots started to grow, depending on the weather, because I didn't want to burn those roots, but eventually when they started to grow, very, very weak fertilizer solution anyway lots and lots of babying and cultivating. And you can see from the video where I made this mount and pinned these keikis to my mount, in comparison to today, the keikis were maybe like half the size and they continued to grow on this mount and started to get a little bit longer. I never ever expected these keikis to bloom, but the vision for me for the future is to one day have a dendrobium of film curtain. So it looks a little bit rustic at this point in time. It's not even a year old. The plan being that one day the whole thing will be full and then it won't look so sparse, but we have to start somewhere. The fact that these keikis actually bloomed and not just one bloom, but I have a proper little display of blooms is, oh, I am over the moon, very, very pleased and very happily surprised. On this mount here, these keikis being much older, two years ago, I only ever received one bloom. So there is a massive difference to cultivating keikis while they are still on the mother plant, as opposed to just letting it go, taking them off and putting them on a mount. I shall continue to do that this year as well, should my mother plant be so generous as to provide me with more keikis. Hey, I have some space to fill over there and anywhere else I can pin more on. Speaking of which, I have two stragglers from the mother plant last year that were only just developing, but they were far too immature to harvest when I did the monster mount. So when they were established enough to be removed from the mother plant, I put them in this kind of a setup, upside down bottle with a little bit of a <laughs> plastic cup so that there would always be water in here. This water mainly is condensation water. I have hardly even fertilized these keikis at all. Whenever there's condensation, this is what collects. And every once in a while, I have to go in and empty this out because I don't want the base to get too wet. Check this out. We've got a new growth coming, even on this keiki right here. So eventually I'm going to pin this keiki onto the monster mount when I see roots starting at the base of this little growth here. You can see that old roots here are extending. So I could theoretically do it now but it's much, much better to wait for the actual roots of the new growth. And then I'll be adding to the monster mount. Now, here is another one, also the other straggler that I've kept in the same setup. I don't have a new growth here yet. That is because it bloomed. I hear you saying, but hang on a second, you've got leaves. The monster mount doesn't have leaves. 
And I'm like, yeah, because these keikis were babied indoors. They were not exposed to the elements because by the time I got to harvest them, it was already far too late in the season and the temperatures were dropping. My idea was to cultivate them, grow them on so that I could pin them onto the mount. And well, it just goes to show that even with leaves on, even if the temperature chill isn't as much, Dendrobiumophyllum keikis will bloom. Unfortunately here, they are already spent, but I took pictures. <laughs> And this keiki does not have any new growth yet. But it's doing pretty well considering it's doing better than these guys, which are already much, much mature than the keikis down there. So yeah, different ways of getting a film keikis to be happy and grow. But I'm telling you, the pampering result of the keikis that you see on this mount from last year while they were still on the cane the best result ever. So shall we have a look-see at the mother plant, seeing as she is the culprit for all that I'm talking about here right now and what I'm planning year in, year out to hopefully one day get an aphyllum curtain. What do you say? This is my Dendrobium aphyllum, the mother plant. Now, many, many years ago, I got a couple of sticks. Pathetic and puny, not even the same standard and quality as the keikis that you just saw on that monster mount. But here we are, many, many years later, and several keikis later as well, because the first keikis I ever got from her that were in excess of my little mount that you saw previously, they were pinned to the top and they're only just now starting to grow up and come onto their own. And those are the top blooms that you can see. The canes aren't long enough to start to go pendant. But look at what has happened since then. I am blown away. This Dendrobium of Philum is just taking over. I'm loving the bloom display this year. They are not long lasting, but I think I have plenty of amazing footage that is absolutely clogging up my hard drive <laughs> because there is no such thing as longevity when it comes to Dendrobium of Philum blooms, but she is doing amazing. I really actually also need to give her another spray today, even though it is a bit overcast, it is not raining, but this orchid is now drinking up the moisture like there is no tomorrow because the base of every little growth that I have is just bursting with new growths now, so there will be more to come. I am also super pleased that this year I managed to keep my aphyllum safe. You can see I tied the gate off there. Last year, this gate was slammed into the wall that is here on the right, and it snapped the new canes that were growing from it. What a shame. One of those beastly, ghastly winds came in the rainstorm, and the weight of the mount, the weight of the canes against the wall with a slam, yeah. I snapped four canes. That is not going to happen this year and this gate has now been tied and will not budge anywhere because I want to see more of this again next year. Luckily those snap canes did bloom so it wasn't all a waste of time but I had to put splints on them to keep the canes somewhat provided with some kind of nutrients and keep the nutrient flow going so to speak but that show didn't last very long so this is definitely a complete completely different spectacle than seeing snap canes with splints on them and then looking at the beautiful blooms. No, this is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm going to lift you up and show you what I mean about wanting a curtain at some point in time. I'm going to try and hold the camera steady, but you can see where that monster mount lives. Same orientation, maybe not as much light because of the covered portico, so the sun being higher in the sky doesn't have as much light there as the mother plant below, but these are keikis, these are babies. They need a lot of light to be able to grow, but we don't want them to burn to a crisp. So that is the gate right there. The mount itself is 80 centimeters in length. And then when we go down, you can see what I'm trying to get at. This mount will always only ever be circular, but yeah, maybe one day 
all in one go. We have ourselves like a shower, a rainfall of these beautiful blooms, at least for two weeks. I think that's gonna look amazing. So that's the plan and that is why this monster mount is where it is and looks the way it does. The mother plant is on a baked piece of cork bark, a huge piece of cork bark. It is very, very heavy and is obviously getting heavier every year, seeing as this orchid keeps growing and growing. Attached to the same mount is a Serratolabium and a Dendrobium seraula, but that was because of the puny little canes that I got of my Aphyllum, and it just looked really ridiculous for the first couple of years. <laughs> and now, well, it's gonna be a little bit difficult to get the other two Dendrobiums off, but eventually, maybe I'll get the courage to literally rip off the other Dendrobium and leave this mount alone with the Aphyllum only. I just don't have the courage to do that right now. <laughs> There's plenty of space for now. Anyway, that is my update. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the progress and if you're here for the first time, I will be linking the making of the monster mount. I will link that video in the description if you want to go back and have a look at that. In the meantime, it's Aphyllum time and it is grow time also. And I'm so excited to push these new growths now again to their maximum so that we get more of this <laughs> come 2023. There's something incredibly beautifully magical about these blooms. Absolutely adore. Really appreciate your time. Have yourself a beautiful day on one condition that you stay safe, please. Take care, bye.